This is the President McCormack Podcast with your host, Mark McCormack. Ladies and gentlemen of the podcast world, Jake Taylor. <laughs> All right, so this is my first one. So is know, it? Oh, dude, I, I don't do. I don't, I don't have anything good to say. <laughs> oh, dude, you got so much stuff, dude. It's uh, it's funny. There's a lot of guys that I brought on. It's like oh, this is my first time I've ever done a podcast. And I'm like, oh, that's a freaking shame, you know? Because I well, it's actually good for me, you know? Because yeah. then it's like, yeah, dude, this is my buddy. It's like, oh, I've never heard him, you know? And I feel I like this podcast and the fact that like there's people that aren't like like quasi famous, you know. And like, but you see, you're very well connected. I'm very well connected, Yeah. but it's not like we're, I don't know, Instagram famous or like flying on our fake private jet that we don't really own. And yeah, you know, I had, so we did some like film stuff and different things. I think my yeah. thing, you, I mean, you know, I do mortgage and stuff. So like years ago, like 2016, 17, 18, something like that, we were doing filming and fun stuff and clothing and whatever. And I think I was at a point of like, I'm not I don't necessarily like want all this attention on myself, but it's not super fun to talk about mortgages, right? Like it's not exciting or interesting. Yeah. Or, like, what are you going to post on my Instagram, my mortgage Instagram page? Right. And so we sort of went through that, but I, yeah, dude, I have this issue where it's like, I, I want to be involved and I want to be in that, in that sphere, but I also don't want to be in front of the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's kind of a weird, a weird dynamic, but it, it is what it is. So, yeah, no, it's, I, I much prefer some of the things I'm involved in other people being in the front, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I can be in the front. You probably feel the same. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'll do the thing, but I don't know. There's, there's some sort of privacy level. Like I've got a couple of friends, you know, like, like this podcast studio is Jimmy Rex's. Yeah. We, we were chatting. Out. Talk about Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. So Jimmy, Jim, I love Jimmy. Jimmy's an awesome bro. He's a good friend of mine. Right. But like he's in that world where there's just X amount of the population that hates him, right? Why is that? Do you think? Because they just look at his social media and they judge him off of that. Or he's a single dude that's 40, 41. You know what I mean? And so it's just like it's not our oh culture. this and it's that. not our culture here for sure. But like yeah. outside of our culture, that's not a big deal, you know? Right, right, right. But I just you know he gets constantly hit up for like people think he pushes drugs and you know like plant med like plant medicine what for like, like what is that a thing i, I don't because attention. he'll openly talk about it you know oh so they and okay. so which well, is, is funny because i openly talk about you, it are you talking like the ayahuasca stuff yeah or? ayahuasca okay. and like shrooms and you know that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah he'll, he'll openly talk about it and how it like affected his life positively yeah but then people will be like oh he pushes drugs on people it's like <laughs> no he doesn't <laughs> didn't, didn't and i don't know if this was i think this was him i don't I forget. I've got like the worst memory, but th there was like a bishop or stake president or something. They went down to like Costa Rica. And yeah. He, was that his group? I can't remember. No, that, he just had him on his podcast. Oh, gotcha. Wasn't yeah? He had nothing to do with the experience. Yeah. As, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure he didn't. Yeah. He just had him on his podcast discussing it. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You know, he's, he's taken some major heat from people. That's weird. And it's, I mean, his social media is very important too. Cause he's, he's now created himself as a brand, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it's a Jimmy Rex real estate team, you know, the we are the they yeah. group that I'm in, yeah. you know, um, him himself as a speaker and as a, you know, cultural advisor, you know, whatever he wants to call himself yeah. or a coach or, you know, um, yeah, I just think it's just one of those things you get in that world, right? Where people just kind of, I, I assume it's kind of hate you. I don't know Jim, Jimmy. Well, I think we've gone to lunch once or twice with Nick and stuff back, back in the day. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> But I would assume he he probably he's able to just brush that off, right? Like Yeah. Well yeah. yeah, I mean most of the time, yeah, I think he's just he does a really good job of brushing it off, but he's he's still a guy. Yeah. You know, he's still a person. So I think I think it does bother him at certain levels. And I and I'm speaking for him and we've never really discussed this in like pure detail. Yeah. I just kinda know his heart a little bit, his intentions. And so, um, and I know he's a caring person. So yeah, I would assume at some level it bothers him a tad, but yeah. at the same time, there's so much good fruit that comes from that. Yeah. You know, not, not to get churchy, but, um, you know, an opposition in all things, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. As churchy as you want, man. I know you go. <laughs> been a hot it just minute. depends on what it's you define. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, a, what church are you talking I about? A, I was going to say my, yeah. my specific church for sure. <laughs> Partake of the sacrament. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It just happens to be called Woodford Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. It just accomplishes the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're all feeling good. We're happy. We're relaxed. Yeah. I feel the spirit. I feel sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel real sorry about a half bottle of that. 
Um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's just it's it's just kind of funny. Yeah, in the social media, see it, it, some of my businesses I'm involved in too. I think are freaking boring. Yeah, you know, like one of, like part of one of my businesses we sell whiteboards, right? You know, I'm like, yeah, I looked at this architectural drawing. Could, and could you, I was going to say, could you make some content around that that would be fun and bubbly? Like, what, what would be your content to sell a whiteboard? Do you want to know something funny I thought about for years? Yeah. And I should have done it, and it would either fail or hit. But I was going to do a, a whole marketing campaign on whiteboards are sexy. And just have sexy chicks, like, riding on whiteboards. Okay, that's a, that's a cop-out, because you can put <laughs> sexy chicks in any of it, and you'd get attention. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I, I I wondered what that would actually do. It's a little off-brand for me. You know, I'm not really the... Well, you'll probably put get tits some, and ass on my Instagram. Yeah, I was going to say, you'll probably get hit up by everybody that's hating on Jimmy right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they go straight to me. Yeah. It's like, oh, dude, you think market boards are sexy? I'm like, I do if you want to buy one. <laughs> yeah, sexy when that money hits my bank <laughs> Super account. Super sexy when you're buying stuff from me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, we're, we're like in education, like new construction education market, right? Yeah. So it's like, no one cares. They don't want a marketing campaign. They want you to meet the spec and just install the stuff. Yeah. You know? So. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's if that was like your only thing, because I was going to say like that might not be interesting, dude. But all your basketball floors and everything else yeah. are awesome. Like I, I see all that stuff, and I'm like, I'm jealous of where you're going and who's <laughs> who's get. I, I want to when I'm when I grow up, <laughs> one of these days. Don't. I, yeah, I know, dude. Um, I want to put a basketball court in 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 indoor eventually. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if if by the time I do that, it ends up being pickleball. But <laughs> you know, oh. dude, I don't think we've done a home. We do a lot of homes, yeah, about 100, 150, 160 homes a year. And I think almost every one of them, let me think about this. I think almost every one does pickleball. They do it. Yeah. It's so popular. Dude. I, I, I'm not on the bandwagon. I've never played, but it's like, it's, it's crazy. It's low impact. People really like it. It's four players, yeah. you know, so you can get two couples. I think when people have the courts, um, yeah, they just, and especially in Utah, right? Cause we get, we get a decent winter, you yeah. know, this year's really good winter, but, um, Pickleball is primarily an outdoor sport, and so if you're going to play in Utah, you're going to play somewhere indoors. And yeah, but I mean, it's yeah, dude. I think I think it's fun. I think you can play with your kids. You can, I, you know, I've not done it yet, but obviously, you see at the gym, they tore the basketball court up and all that stuff, and did all the pickleball, pickleball, and it's, it's busy. busy. Like it's busy every day. Yeah. Way busier than basketball. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. In fact, honest, I don't know how much they monetize that, or if it's just part of the group. But I don't know. I could see them getting rid of the other side of the basketball court. Dude, maybe. Then they might pull basketball all the way out. It's it's completely full, and that's my fear of what I'm saying. Like, I want to put a basketball court in, and then by the time I do that, does nobody play basketball anymore? Like, what? Well, you can always do both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What we need to do for you, though, is just we got to make your court cool. Oh, yeah. Like, paint it wild. Okay. People get so conservative with it, and I'm just like, if you hate it, we'll sand it off and paint it boring if you want. I've got to have a house that I can put it in first. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I'll be able to build a barn. Dude, I don't, have any, I don't have any space. You've never been out to my place. Not the one in Alpine, no. Oh, I, I, I tied it. I mean, with the pergola and the pool and... Which house did you buy up there? So, uh, you know on Main, how Main Street curves in and goes up to Heritage Hills? Yeah. Um, just past the church. I'm up past the farm. I'm up on the hill there. Oh, okay. I don't know that side very well. Okay. Yeah, so just up, kind of up the hill. Yeah. But it's... Yeah, I, I, dude... I, I lucked out. It wasn't a, it's a, it's not a, it's not like that was what happened. <clears throat> we don't have to go down the, the divorce thing, but I had to move out of my place in, yeah. in Bluffdale. And I kind of really had like zero, zero time to, to figure it out. Yeah. And so <clears throat> my boss passed away this, this, well, I say this year, last, last year, 2022. And I, I called him cause we had some houses on, on inventory. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey Paul, where, you know, I've got to find a place to live like tomorrow. What do we have on the books? He's like, well, we've got like a, a some beater out in Saratoga that really needs to like be remodeled and you know that, and then we've got like this eight thousand square foot house in Alpine that you could move into tomorrow. And I'm like, um, you know, what are the terms? Blah blah blah. And I, I'm not going to give tons of detail on that, but yeah. they, they hooked me up. They were favorable. Oh yeah, they were favorable. And, <laughs> and dude, I moved in. Granted, it needed. I completely remodeled it. And what year did you move in? I moved in 18, 17, 18. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I've been there for coming up on Rates five low, prices low. Dude, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't end up having to, because I was going through the divorce, I didn't, I just leased it the first year and yeah. then on a lease option and then, then technically purchased it the next year. But um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't have afforded that place. 
outside of that. So, again, I, I scored. <laughs> but it was good. Do you like it up there? Dude, I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. So, I've got about, I think I'm just under an acre, but I don't have any. I need a barn. I want a barn. I don't have anywhere to put it, dude. So, yeah. eventually, we'll we'll figure something Because you're on the hill, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just not any room. I, the yard, dude, there's a guy in Alpine that dug out his backyard into the hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Calls us up, says he wants a hoop. This is like 15 years ago. Yeah. So I'm young and I'm in the business. My dad's like, hey, go measure this thing. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. So I show up and it's like this kind of pitched roof, you know, but it's like built to the hill. And I'm like thinking, this is going to be the smallest freaking court I've ever seen, right? Because it was only exposing like 30 feet deep. Wow. Something like that. Bro, I walked down into this thing. It is the exact stake center cultural hall with a stage and everything. And I was like, and that's what? All, it's all in the hill? All in the hill. It's 80% in this hill, like, like a, bored into it's the like back. a bunker? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, but you're entering it from, like, the roof line, yeah. right? So I was like, this is the weirdest thing ever. So I go in there. It's the exact dimensions. He talked. Um, so we have the church's contract, right? Yeah. So we do them all. <laughs> he talked the uh, some builder into giving him just that portion of it, right? And he just said, build me the exact same thing. You know, there's concrete instead of, like, you know, some frame walls and stuff, right? But other than that, right, it's the exact same dimensions. So I shoot it with my laser. It's 18 feet, three quarters or whatever, right? And I'm like, I know exactly what you need, man. So I'll just send it all to you. And he's like, great, you know? That's awesome. But, and they called us because they looked at the church uh, hoop and just saw our name and called us. And so we, we it, it's the exact church. I mean, it's the weirdest thing ever. It's like... Just walking into a church that's built into the side of a hill, but just the just the cultural hall side. That was crazy so, to me. Do you know where Del Murphy's old house was? I don't. Okay, that little cold, okay. I'm gonna say I could I could show you right exactly where it's at. You'd know exactly oh, where probably, it's at. Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah. That whole neighborhood, that whole area, I mean, obviously it's blown up a, a ton, even just in the last like four years, yeah. the last two years. But like I can't I can't wrap my head around it, dude. Like there's every house on that other side's gotta be three to five million bucks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and I just don't. Really, you got a couple monsters in there. There's I a say like there's a. Let me see how big. There's a fifty six million dollar house in there. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, and it's not Keith Barton's old house. It's the, uh, it's a new one. That's not a. That's not a. I don't know where he. You, you know this better than I would. That's not a. Car dealership. The, you, no, you, Keith Barton was the. No, he's the attorney, but. Oh, Brown Brown. Yeah, Brown. It was his brother in law. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. I forgot the. I forgot yeah, that was the connection. But he lived yeah. out there too. Yeah, Brent did. Yeah, Brent lived uh, up in the cove. Yeah, yeah. All those, all those dudes. Uh, the thing. So the reason why I always ask you if you like it up there. Yeah. Because it takes forever to get out of there, dude. It does. Right. It's it the one bad side. It does, but it's so worth it. It's almost like, and you and you know this like culturally. I mean, this is a little bit different because it's high LDS population up there, but like it's almost like being in park city you get out of the valley even though it's like highlands right there you still are far enough away up in that cove area where you don't feel like you're in the city yeah um which is really nice because it's quiet it's quiet there's not a lot of traffic you don't hear from anybody like i like the neighbors but you never hear from them right like right. you don't you're never on on top of each other and so su super nice like i wouldn't really i really wouldn't trade it like i i loved Bl bluffdale i love the neighborhood there um but it's just so calm. Like I'm right on, like my backyard's the entire, you know, yeah, mountain, mountain view. Yeah. And it's just, it's pretty out there, dude. I like it. Like if I, if I was to go anywhere else and I don't even really like the park city culture, it would probably be something like that. Yeah. So. I was going to say outside of park city and, you know, the covenant and all that stuff up there, that's yeah. like ridiculous. Like Alpine's probably arguably the nicest place to live. It's nice. What do you say? It's nice. It's clean. Yeah. It feels like it feels like you're going from the city to a small town, right? To me, right? And and I love that. I love that feel. Yeah, because you're. How long does it take you to get to the freeway going up north? About fifteen, something like that. Ten, fifteen minutes from. Oh, it, really? Not 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 on like heavy traffic, but just like a constant traffic. I think it's about fifteen minutes to. Oh, the, okay. To the freeway, and then really, it's only about another ten minutes to like 114. Yeah. And so you're only about 25, 30 minutes to the gym and. And then I've got to go north for work anyway. So, where's your office at now? Big deal. Fifty third. Have you you've seen our new offices off Fifty third? They just built two huge buildings, like six six seven story buildings, right there off Fifty third. So security, on the on the west side. Yeah, on the west yeah. side. So Security National owns, I think, that whole city block. So they've got a couple others that they're going to tear down and and build, but I think that's stalling with what's going on. Uh -huh. 
right now. Inflation. Yeah, it's nice though. Cost and stuff. Yeah, it's nice. Nice. They did. They did a killer job on the buildings. You need to. You need to come in. Brett's been over. Has he? A couple times, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come check it out for sure. Yeah, last time I saw you right by the eBay building. Yeah, so they own that building too, and I that that was something I think they foreclosed on or took or did something, but they still own that that building. All I right. Think. right. Yeah, they were gonna they were gonna sell it. Um, that's kind of an interesting building too, though. I'm not great at commercial real estate, but <laughs> dude, that they they this is talking crap. So hopefully no, nobody listens to me on this podcast. <laughs> um, they they brought in a a call center. And like right at like maybe halfway through my time of being there. And so the second floor was an entire call center. And I don't know if you've been around that industry much, but dude, you're like half of them are getting arrested for drugs daily. Like there were cops there. We had dudes running through the, through the place naked, like <laughs> drugs in the toilet. It was just such a weird, oh really? like such a weird dynamic. So when, when we had to move yeah. while they were building this other building, I was so excited to get out of that lease. They're just like, Watching dudes go crazy oh, every dude. day. We had the cops there, I think, almost every day. Really? Yeah. Dang. Almost every day. I know it's a pretty easy job to get. Oh, it's. Right? I, I, I'm. I'm sure it's like the churn rate on that is fast. I mean, I would. Yeah. I would guess like you know you're hiring and firing every five you know five to six weeks. Yeah, that's my guess, but crazy dude. <laughs> yeah, naked dudes running through the halls. I've never had that in any other business. That's kind of hot. You know, you know, I didn't get a good enough look. <laughs> I probably should have. He's just close the blinds. It's like, oh, it's Wednesday. Well, no, it's just he was going a little too fast for me. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> Slow down, bud. That makes sense. That makes sense. Can you give me a cartwheel or anything? Yeah, yeah. do something exciting. <laughs> just slip and fall or something. <laughs> so you got to remind me where did where did you do high school at? So yeah, man, we could we could. Dive I don't know down. the Jake Taylor we story. Could dive down this down yeah. this story. So I grew up up here. And so I grew up in Midvale and went to Midvale Elementary, Midvale Middle, and then and then to Hillcrest. Ah, uh, Hillcrest. But um, I got into some trouble around my sophomore year. Did you? And my mom had already been living down in Southern Utah in, in Kanab, and so they they shipped me off to live in Kanab, which is which is super weird because I don't know my graduating class at Hillcrest. I'm gonna guess and it was like thousand, two thousand. I don't know a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> um, and uh can was like nine ninety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it small. was crazy, dude. It was weird. And that might be why I like why I like Alpine, just coming from that that atmosphere. So go down there, get back into sports, school. It was it was it was super good for me. Yeah. So I mean I would I think I would have dude, I don't even know if I'd have graduated up here. Like that's really? how that's how like mind blowing the change was. So getting wild up here. I, you know, it's weird because like my parents got divorced when I was like twelve. And then I think my mom moved when I was like 14 or something like, like that. So it was just me and my dad and he was working full time and I was, you know, getting into as much trouble as I could possibly figure get out. into. Yeah. yeah. Figure out or find out, you know, it's interesting. Funny enough, even talking about this though, um, cause I did a lot of stuff probably, I'm not going to implicate myself on this <laughs> podcast, but it's probably a good idea. I, I got into a lot of trouble. I did a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing, but one of the things I, I thought through, cause I was making money doing some of that stuff. <laughs> um, and I was like, dude, if I had somebody that like had given me some direction in my youth, like I could have been so much further ahead because I was always motivated. I, I, w I will, I will tell you, tell you this story and I'll probably, probably get myself in trouble or, you know, state president's going to call me or something, even if, even if I don't go. But <laughs> um, dude, when I was like, I must've been third or fourth grade. Um, they had one of these things. It was like a, they called it a jumpathon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so like we'd go we'd go and like raise money for cancer or so something. I don't even remember what it, what it was. Um most kids I think even today they just all they do is they bring it home and they give it to their parents and then they get like they get like candy bars or something, right? Like you get a candy bar for donating 20 bucks or whatever. Or something. I don't even remember remember what it was, but I remember it only took me about a day to get myself in trouble with this. I don't even know if I've told my parents this, but um I would knock all the doors or for blocks around this around the school i figured out on day one i wanted to win the prize of the class or something right but yeah. i wanted to be the best so i so i started knocking doors the people would start cutting checks or whatever but then they started giving out cash right so it's like 20 30 40 50 bucks cash i would pocket the cash 
and then bring the bring the checks in. And then I went back to school the next day and then recruited two or three kids to come back with me so we could blitz the other neighbor the other <laughs> neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of that is, is I guess if I had some direction, I was motivated to, to I make was some motivated money at an early age. Yeah. And so it led me into getting into some trouble and then, and then, uh, figuring life out in Southern Utah. So oh, nice. nice. <laughs> and then did you, uh, did you go to college? Yeah. So I didn't finish. I went to SU. Well, I went all over the place, man. So I, I went to SUU. Um, I came up to UVSC, UVU or whatever it is now. Yeah. And then went back to SUU when I got when I got home from my mission. And then um got married, came up here, went to Slick for a couple of semesters. So it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. Did did I don't know I don't think I accomplished anything, but <laughs> it is what it is. No, I mean college, I mean some of these podcasts I've been on kind of crapped on college at certain levels and it's like I mean wasn't all, all you know. joking aside, I would love to own a college. Or a hospital, right? Everything that people feel obligated to to do, <laughs> like those are right. <laughs> like I would, I love the business of it, yeah. And I love, I love like where people feel like they have to do that in order to be some level, like have some level of success, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I never really felt that way in school, like even even in you know traditional schooling, you know, high school, yeah. whatever. I always kind of felt like you were just you would get something, memorize it, regurgitate it, forget it, right. And that's just kind of how I, how I looked at it. And, but yeah, I mean, I think it's good for the right people. Yeah. I thought college was interesting for me because when I first, I got home from my mission, right. And I was like, Hey, college, cool. I think I was going to be a dentist when I first started. Dude, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, really? Until I realized like they had the highest suicide rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just tell, I mean, your parents should just like pick something. It's like a uh, dentist. I don't know. Doctor. Uh, uh, they make money. Right. Uh. But, um, I get in there, right? And, like, my first semester was, like, the exact same semester I did at high school. It's, like, biology and, like, English and, like, all this same shit. And I'm, like, aren't I done with this? Like, yeah. isn't college... I thought college was advanced, like, the second you go to it. I, I, I feel like if they were... If somebody was to do, like, applied knowledge, right? Like, teach me how to actually run this business. Not, oh, not, yeah. like, not like, how to run numbers or not how to do spreadsheets, but... Teach me the ins and outs of building a business, building a team, managing people, like any of that kind of stuff. Because none of those people have done it. None of them. None of them. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I, I wish they had something like that. It's like I, like I just said, like if I had had some direction as a kid, like that, that'd be different. But even as like, you know, figuring out business and life and all that other kind of stuff, like having somebody hold your hand. And, and there are, there were, and there have been people that do, but, yeah. but you know. I, it'd actually be something that would be useful, right? The way I look at college now, or, or really any of that kind of stuff, is, and, and and this is giving direction to to the youth. Go into it, do well, because you need to have the discipline to do well if you're going to do it. But take advantage of your network. Mm -hmm. That's the point of those of the schools, right? Whether it's if you're here, it's BYU or U of U or whatever. But if you're going to other schools, network, and that is, and that's. That's where you're gonna, dude. I've got, I know so many guys that are doing so well that they probably didn't get much out of school and are crushing it because of the network they made in college. Oh yeah, well the network's the whole thing. Yeah. So when I when I took over my parents' business, they I told my dad, I'm like, I'll I'll stay here and do this if you um, pay for me to go get my executive MBA. And he was like, great, deal made, right? And then. When I really started diving into it, I was like, oh, I don't need to go to school in Utah. I need to actually go to school at Stanford, right? Because I didn't want to fly all the way across the freaking country to go to like Harvard or one of those ones, right? Yeah. But I was like, oh, Stanford's not that far and I'll just go on the weekends, right? Then I started adding up how much that was going to cost and I was like, oh, I'd rather just keep my bonuses. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the network might be cool, but eh, you know what I mean? And that's the only thing that I think I've ever regretted with college is like, I don't know, who would I have met, you know, in 2010? Who would I have met at Stanford in an executive MBA course? You know, a ton. I mean, who knows? Yeah, you, you don't. You could have yeah. ran into the, you know, the next Zuckerberg or the next, you or know, Elon whatever. or yeah, I don't know. You know, probably not Elon. I think he was way out of it by then. But yeah, and probably the guys I would have met haven't actually hit their their moment yet, right? Because it's just it's just interesting. Like the network networking to me is funny, right? Because people 
that's the big coaching thing now, right? It's like your network, your network, your network, get on your social media and build a network. And you just take those guys to lunch. And it's like, don't take me to lunch, <laughs> right? I don't have time to go to lunch with you. Like come to my office. If you want to talk to me, you know, I'm the, I'm the same way, but there are guys that do that, man. Like where they're constantly like with people every single day. I'm, but where does it get them though? I don't, I, I'm not that guy. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to judge it either, but I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't know if maybe I'm, uh, like an, an introvert, extrovert, like, like a certain situations, yeah. but I'd rather like sit down and work than be out and about every single yeah. day. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a, you know, I, I was in the business during, during the crash and I used to play, dude, I, I'm not any good at golf, so it doesn't matter, but I would play golf like two, three, four, four times a week. I, worked the minimum amount that I felt like I needed to work in order to pay the bills and do, you know, do yeah. a little bit. And I also thought like, Oh, it's never going to end. Like it's so easy and it's never going to, it's never going to end. But I think as soon as the crash hit and I went from making like really good money to like no money, <laughs> you know, it stressed the hell out of me. So I think since then I was like, no, I've got to work every single day. I don't, yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time to golf. I don't have time, time to have fun. I don't have time to go to lunch. Yeah. And I know that, that might be like a skewed thought process or some, some therapy that might need to happen or something, but no, no, I think, no, you're right. I mean, I don't waste a lot of time golfing, right? Expect, like I never choose to go golfing, right? If I, I ever go golfing, someone's invited me yeah. and they've just got lucky that I've got five hours to blow on a Wednesday, right? Like oh, I, dude, That sounds so like that just five <laughs> hours on any day sounds rough. I know it's like, oh, and then on the weekend, it's like, no, I'm out on the weekends, bro. Cause and I'm not getting me up at 5.30 in the morning on Sunday, guy. You know what I mean? I just don't love golf. I love drinking in a golf cart, playing rap music from the 90s, and driving around and hitting balls around. That's fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. But golf sucks. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, and I'm competitive, and I can be, you know, I might have one good shot, and then what, you know, and then I'm starting to chuck my clubs. and you Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But no, I, my thing with networking, I find with people, what's worked for me really, really well is doing a good job yeah. for people, you know? So I've met a lot of people actually from doing home basketball courts in their home, right? Cause it's fun for me. I show up, I'm the owner of the company, right? So then I can just be like, Oh, what do you want? Well, you don't need two. You only need one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, let's just save that money. Let's put pads all through here. Let's do an awesome graphic on your floor. Like, you don't need three hoops and, you know, 2,000 square feet. You know no. what I'm saying? It's like, you only need one. And um, I kind of have, like, built these things up. And I'm like, hey, what do you do? You know, like, this beautiful home. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. I did this thing or this thing. Then you kind of get to know them a little bit. Then, you know, if something goes wrong, you get to know them even better, right? Oh, the height adjuster's not working. Oh, let me get my guy over there. Here's my cell phone. You can call me anytime you want. And that's the way I've kind of built some of my network, right? Yeah. And then those guys refer you to other people and then you just start kind of talking and blah, 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 blah. And you just kind of like, you, just your normal work, yeah. doing a good job at it really gets you to know. When you're really like, you're, you're, at, you're not being, you're not placating. You're actually, you're actually curious, right? So you, you want to know, right. like, Hey, I want to have, I'm curious what you do. Like, you know, this is this, as opposed yeah. to just being, being fake. Cause I think people can feel that. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, Oh, Hey, this is really cool. See you guys later. Like, like go down a checklist. Like yeah. what, did, how did you start? Yeah. Where'd you go to college? UVU, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh man, I know. I like when I get, when people do that to me, I always want to be like, I don't know. I just kind of pull them in and be like, what do you need, man? Like, what's your goals? Are you building a business? Why are you asking me these stupid questions? What, what was the, you and I have had some conversations because I know you've got a buddy that, that, uh, owns a strip club or did or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, so maybe don't, maybe don't say that one, but I'm curious in, in asking these questions. Oh, what, we can talk about that. What one. was, what was like the most interesting job or, or one that stands out to you that you remember like, Oh, that guy was awesome. And then this is what he does. Like, well, he was really funny. He's, he's a, still a good friend of mine. Um, I need to have him on the podcast actually. Cause he's wild. Uh, he was my landscaper. Is it the same guy? Yeah, he was my landscaper, and <laughs> yeah. we did we did trade work. He wanted me to build a website for him, and I was like, uh, I was like, okay, cool, you know. Like he goes, oh, I went to him. And I said, hey, we should do a little bit of trade. Is there anything you need, you know? Because you know our yards and bluffed are freaking hell expensive, like a hundred grand in that thing. Oh yeah. And um, so we backed out a little bit to do a little bit of marketing this, and I was like, okay, cool. He's like, I'm super busy right now, man. But like in the fall, like you know, November, whatever, we'll get together and we'll map this thing out. I was like, cool, as long. As as long as you're cool with that, I'm cool with that, right? So he wrote off the rest, the rest of the bill, right? And I gave him a credit towards some website. <laughs> Bro comes over with his wife and kids, you know, they sit down. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, we're talking. He goes, okay, so I own the exotic kitty. <laughs> and I was like, 
What's that? <laughs> yeah, well, even you saying that, I've, I've never heard of it, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you haven't? Oh, it's like the most, well, you don't go, that's why. Yeah, it's like know. the most popular one in Utah. Oh, is it? By far. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I grew up, I grew up, like, here, so all the only ones I knew were, like, northern and southern or something. I don't yeah. know, I don't know anything else. Yeah, it's across from, well, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to divulge all my knowledge of <laughs> strip clubs. They, they, so, have, they have really good lunch. <laughs> yeah, lunch is good there. Um, they wear dresses now. No. No. Um, so with, with my mind, right, the way that I kind of handled this it was funny. So I was kind of, I was like taking this in like, oh, I got to build a freaking strip club website. I was like, mm. <laughs> so after they left, I talked to my wife. I was like, do you care? And she's like, are they naked? And I go, no, none of the pictures are naked. They're just, you know, I showed them a couple of the pictures. Yeah. She's like, I don't care. Just build the website, get it over with. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I can't remember how long it took me. It was that long, four or five hours, you know, I knocked this thing out, you know, I need a lot of information from him and going back and forth yeah. a little bit, you know, but I mean, building a website is just not that complicated, yeah. especially if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you know, I probably saved him 70 hours of sitting yeah. down behind a computer and watching YouTube videos oh. and trying to figure it out, which he didn't want to do. Right. No. So it was a win win. But so, <laughs> but then, um, I just can't help myself though. So I'm like, so how do you make money in here? You know, and he talks about the profit splits with the girls when they dance and like the way that they do this and they, they all tip the bouncer. Essentially, dude, he's got like one employee in there. It's like the manager, yeah. right? Um, and maybe the DJ is an employee. I can't really remember, right? But it's basically all 1099 workers. They're all licensed with the state, yeah. right? It's actually, it's a lot more, more of a legitimate business than you would assume, you know? I've never, honestly, I would, I, would, I wouldn't even think through until you said splits, but I'm like, obviously they've got, it's probably set up yeah. like a, it's probably set up like a barbershop or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no, no. some are, some are, they're set up like with booth rent, right? Like yeah. every day the girls got to pay 150 bucks or whatever. Then they keep all their tips or whatever, but there they do lap dances. And so <laughs> I'm just kind of laughing cause I, I know way too much about this junk. Um, but if they do lap, they just do like a 50, 50 split, I think. And so the, the club takes 50%, they take 50%. Or maybe the base rates that, and whatever they tip, the girls get the tip on top. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, crazy. I actually do, but I shouldn't know all this stuff. <laughs> so, but like talking to him was really funny, right? Because it was like, I don't know. I just, I just started looking at it like as a business, you know. And I know they sell sex. It's a sexually oriented business. It's an SOB license, right? And, um, and you know, I'm like, dude, and he, dude, he flushes chicks out of there if they ever do drugs or alcohol or like any of that stuff. It's not allowed in his club. That's None smart, of it's allowed. That's smart though, because that's such well, a they shut him down in two seconds. Yeah. Well, they send people in, right? So they send people in to like try and talk the girls into giving them stuff, and they're just undercover cops. Yeah. That's how they get their license pulled. Bro, those things make money. Oh, bad. They make imagine. stupid money, and it's all cash. Yeah. And so, um, without getting into the details of that, it's very enticing, especially on the investor side. Because if I don't ever have to walk in there or deal with people or pick the music or pick the up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't have to do anything if you were to invest in it. And he's expanding. I think he's got about four of them now. Oh, wow. And so they're all over the place. He's got one in Missouri. He's got one in Wyoming, one here. I actually looked at one to buy with him up in Ogden because it was the same deal. What we were really doing is buying the real estate that yeah. it was in. And the price, the price was hella good compared to what it is now. I should, probably should have done it. Yeah. And then the the club was a tenant, but then we wanted to do a deal where he was going to buy the club, and then I would get like a kick and like all this stuff. And like on paper, it just made a ton of sense, right? So what's what killed the deal? It's a strip club. <laughs> it's a strip club. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. You can't really even on this podcast. Like it's hard to say. Like yeah, I don't really want anybody to know that it might be super yeah. profitable. It might net more than other businesses that you might be involved in. Oh yeah, you don't want to like run up to somebody and be like, "Oh, hey, I you know I made X amount of money at the strip." Oh, club. I would never have told anyone, yeah. honestly. Yeah, no, yeah, I just. And it's this, weird though because I'm not like that. It's not like I'm ashamed of it. You know what I mean? No. Like, I, I, if you want to go to a strip club, knock yourself out. You know what I mean? Whatever. But I think that's just the but, cult. again, it's the culture, right? Like you try to stay yeah. sensitive to like, you know ayahuasca and hurting somebody's feelings about drugs yeah. or something, yeah. something that has nothing to do with anything. And, yeah. but, but, but it does at the same time, if you posted that or you shared it, shared it on your inner Instagram, yeah. somebody's probably going to make a comment, right? Oh, y'all oh, freak. I can't even imagine some of the people. And, and to be fair with, with the situation I was in, it never came down to where I needed to make the decision because it was kind of in the negotiation phase of the start. And yeah. then, uh, I mean, if I called him up and I just said, hey, man, I want to park half a mil with you. Like, yeah. where can we do it? Like, he would make it happen. Yeah. And he's an amazing operator. Like, legitimately, I would never even touch this thing. I would either get 
a you know paper bag full of money every month, or I would get a wire. However, he's doing. I don't really know. Okay, let's, let's play. Let's play that out. Hypothetically, he shows up with a with a bag of cash. Yeah. Do you literally have to like wash it? Like, what do you do? No, you don't have to wash it. No, no, no. It's not drug money. No, no, no. I'm not talking drug money. I'm talking like. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been uh, touched. <laughs> it's, it's filthy money. <laughs> um, it would be needed. I don't know. Yeah, it would probably need to be clean. I don't know. You just take it to the bank and say, hey. I just take it to the bank and be like, there you go. Touch, I'm not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I actually have no idea. I, probably if it was once, it would probably be, they need to be washed. Oh, something. I don't even know. So. I wouldn't, I would leave it in the bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and just yeah. drop and just drop it off. Plus, it'd be kind of fun though, too, right? A little Walter Whiteish, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, just show up to the bank. Of course, they'd start flagging all my damn accounts too. You can't show up with like thirty thousand dollars a month in cash. I wonder how they, but they do it right. So, like, how do they do? It? Same, same with like dispensaries. So, how do they? How do dispensaries they? Dispensaries you can't put in the bank. So you just have to keep your own your own money because it's not federal. Yeah. But the but the the strip club you you can or could. Oh yeah, absolutely can. It's going to get flagged. So what do you do about that? Do you just take the flag? Take the audit. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, but I don't disagree. It's anything over like ten thousand, right? Yeah, yeah. If you ever deposit more than ten thousand dollars in cash, you're gonna get flagged. So, and yeah. So if I was, yeah, li I mean, literally, it would be thirty to fifty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I mean, it, those things crush it. Yeah. And that would be a minority portion of the earnings. That's awesome. But yeah, and you know, and I would. I mean, you keep some of it, right? I don't know. Maybe the first month you just keep in your house. I don't know. Dude, just don't in case know. you want to. Tip the delivery drivers. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> what, yeah. what delivery drivers are coming to your house? I do that on the door. On the DoorDash, it's just done. Yeah, I know. True, <laughs> that's true. I I, mean, I don't. Tip, I only tip when I go to Vegas. It's basically hotel guys, right? You're just yeah. tipping the hotel guys. I've come up with a hard stance, though. I'm not freaking doing it when you flip that iPad around. I'm done. Five guys, you're not getting tipped. Chipotle, you're not getting tipped. Well, so to that point, why? I, I like that they did that. F for them because it's super manipulative, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a manipulative play for people that don't want to feel guilty, especially face to face. Yeah. And so, so I bet they win more often than not. Really, oh, for sure. I bet it's 80% of the time people tip. Probably. And, and, but to that same point, like the tip is for service, right? There's no service in, in any of that. Like you're tipping for service and it's your choice to tip what you want to tip for yeah. the level of service you've received. Right. I hate when they ask for a tip before. Or like, like, for example, if you've got a big group and you're sitting down and they want you to tip, you know, 20% or something like that, like it's a pre- Oh, the gratuity thing? Yeah, the gratuity. Is, it's already oh, I love gratuity. It's always less than I would normally do. Yeah. Always. Well, it's 18% for, generally. And for me, and for me, I, I just want to know, I want you to stay motivated to, right. for the tip, right? Because I yeah. could double that or triple it or even, you know, yeah. pay more than what my meal was. Yeah. But- yeah, that kind of, I don't. I don't disagree with you. Dude. Don't <laughs> don't don't flip that around. And it depends on it depends on what it was. If there was some level of service and it's different, but fast food, like it is that is what it is. Oh, exactly, dude. It's like I mean, I I think they do it at Starbucks. Do they? I'm pretty sure they do it at Starbucks. I feel like I only are. It's like I, I just paid you seven dollars for an oat milk brown sugar flippity flap, whatever the hell my wife wants. You know what I mean? It and it's like, cost like I'm not giving cents. you two more bucks. You know, it drives me nuts. That's interesting. But it, but again, they people do it. Yeah. So it makes sense for the business to do. Yeah. I guess if you and I owned it, we'd probably be cool with it. But we don't want to pay it. Well, I'm telling you, here's where I think it came from. I think it came from the credit card companies. Probably. Because they built that into their POS mm -hmm. system, right? Because they're like, every time these guys tip, we make another 2% mm -hmm. off of that tip, right? So it's like... It's like a win-win for both of them, right? The credit card companies make a bunch more money. Talk about not being present. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, and you can tell, too. You can tell the, the, the places that they do that where the people are just like kind of looking off, like, yeah, you just hit whatever number you want here. I kind of do the same thing at, like, the grocery stores when they're like, do you want to just round up? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to round up. No. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't even, either. I don't know what you want me to round up on. But I also don't know where that money goes, right? Like, I don't believe, I want to believe, and I don't want to be... Just doubting everything, but yeah. I want to believe that it goes somewhere good. I kind of don't believe it goes somewhere good. No, I, for charity, for sure. I picked my charities a few years ago, and I'll swap one in and out every now and again, right? That I'm going to put my money into. Yeah, that's it. You know, and I and the thing too is like I I, I don't want to sound like I'm Mister you know freaking philanthropist guy, right? I'm still <laughs> building, but like I, I tip well and I donate to multiple charities every year, multiple times, and. I'm just not going to hit up every single thing. 
one of the things I have done is every single time um, that GoFundMe comes across or I get introduced to one, as long as it's for a cause that's that I think is legit, yeah. you know what I mean? I donate to them every single time. I've never not. And we're talking, I bet I'm over 100 now. I've donated to a bunch of them. I usually like to see what it what it is, and then I want to believe what it is. <laughs> right. that, and that's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, you know, like a cancer fund, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm always kind of like, eh. Like, what's going on with this? I've just had, I've had weird experiences. Like, my brother passed away in, in 2017, and we... We, my family at the time created a, a GoFundMe for the, for the funeral, right? Yeah. For whatever, just to, and, well, actually I think they did it for his daughter schooling or something like that. So oh, I was okay. trying to raise money, but <clears throat> someone else in the family, um, created another one to try ultimately just to try to get money for themselves off of his death. <laughs> Shit. And, and so like the death was real, but the cause of the, the intent for the money was poor. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, gosh, people just take advantage of, of any opportunity they can. Why? I don't get it. I don't know. I think it's like, can you imagine getting 3000 bucks in that situation? Like you feel like the biggest piece of shit ever. I think they don't. Right. Other, other, I think that's sort of the mentality of it. Like you you and I would, but other people could, could do that all day and feel totally fine with it. You know? And so, and to that same point, they're probably not super successful people either, right? Yeah. They're kind of the bottom feeders, right? So, so getting five hundred bucks is they're stoked because maybe they can go buy some more drugs or something. I don't know, but yeah, I can <clears> see <throat> that. I could actually see that. Ugh, anyways, though, but I'm not chipping at Chipotle. I'm not tipping, chipping. I'm not tipping at Chipotle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. Not unless they're coming to clean your table and rub your shoulders or something. Right. I'll take a shoulder rub. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> You get a better a better tip. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else, man. There's so many things in our in our culture that's weird. So I interviewed my mom a little while ago. I right? saw. I didn't listen to that one, but I saw that one. You check one out. It's interesting because I was kind of asking, and my grandma's one's really interesting too. Because I'm like, what was it like when you were a kid? You know what I mean, dude. Like, listen, it's like we rode our bikes everywhere on dirt roads, basically, in Grantsville. Yeah, or not Grantsville, in Granger. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you know, now they're like freaking four lane highways out there. And it's just a different world we live in. Even from when we, you know, we grew up in the 90s, bro. The yeah. 90s were the best, of course. Well, you went to, you lived out here, right? Or up, up I went in, to Lone Peak High School. Yeah. And, and I, at schools and everything are totally different for me for me now. So such a weird dynamic for us to like run kids around like to six different places. Like yeah. I walked to school. I walked to middle school. I was old enough to drive to, to high school. So that wasn't yeah. a problem. But. My parents didn't take me in. They had their own jobs. They had things to do. Like, I never had to, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and to that point, like what you said, dude, we used to ride our bikes from, from like 7200 South clear to Fashion Place when I was like six. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they don't do that stuff anymore. Like, no. kids, don't, kids don't leave the neighborhood in, anymore, really. No, they don't. See, we, we would ride our bikes. I get permission to do this. My, my friend's mom ran the Arby's. She was the manager of the Arby's in American Fork. Okay. So we would roll from like basically where Kohler, it's not, it's not even Kohler's anymore. What the freak's like Peters, Peterson's? Oh yeah. Whatever. You know that yeah, little yeah, four yeah. corners uh-huh. there. We would, we would ride up to that all meet and then we would go down the Alpine highway all the way down into American Fork. Dude, it took like two hours. I bet. Right. And we, I mean, we were a long way away from a lot of things, Oh yeah. you know, rolling past the cemetery, rolling past American Fork Rec Center, you know, all the way down to Main Street, on the Main Street, all the way down to freaking Arby's. Yeah. And then we'd go down there, and she would be there, she'd give us a bunch of, you know, roast beef sandwiches and apple turnovers, and then she'd drive <laughs> us home. Because there's no way in hell we're driving back home. That's freaking uphill, uphill the whole yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, I mean, we didn't have earbuds in, we didn't have music, it was just us shouting at each other. Oh, yeah. This is fun! Yes! One of the things I thought about with, with that, and I can't remember for the life of me, maybe you're better with this, how the hell did we ever organize anything? Like we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, dude, oh, yeah. how, how did we all, how did we always meet up at the right time at the right place? Like how did our buddies ever communicate where we were going? Right. Well, like, in elementary school, I don't even remember. We, I mean, we must just have meet up places, go drive, we'll probably go around everyone's house and gather, Yeah. gather everyone up. Who's going to hang out with us that day and then yeah, go crazy. Huh? Right. I mean, even, even high school, man, there's like a couple houses, well, you remember in high school, you used to memorize everyone's phone number. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, at that, at that time, you know, you're, you're, you're calling and making plans or doing whatever. Yeah. But Or, you know, you made plans at school for everybody to, to meet up at some place or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, I was just thinking when I was a kid, like, we're going to go to, <laughs> this is 
I guess you you lived up down here though. So I lived by they. What, what is it called now? It used to be like the Quilted Bear, but before that it was um, Lionel Play World. So we oh. would, we would go after school to Lionel Play World and play with all the crap every day. And like, dude, I don't know. We were second, third grade, second grade. My parents let me just run around. <laughs> Yeah, nom and in anywhere in Midville I wanted to go. I brought that up with my mom about how we were just like gone till it was dark, and yeah. she was like, "No, no, it was never like that, Mark." And I'm thinking, "Oh, my bad. I just don't remember my own life." <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was like that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to pick on your mom because she's probably going to she's probably going to watch this or, or listen <laughs> to it. But but I had this conversation with my mom. I I don't know how it came up, and my sister can back me up on it because my sister and I were laugh like laughing hard. Uh, about this um i said something to my mom about uh cinnamon rolls i'm like oh grandma made the best cinnamon rolls okay i miss that i missed the cinnamon rolls when we were when we were little she's like i made the best cinnamon rolls i'm like i don't i don't remember you ever once making cinnamon rolls ever yeah. like no it was it was me and we always had this this and this i'm like I think you made. I think you made this stuff up. <laughs> like, i'm positive <laughs> i'm positive your your memory of my childhood is a story that needed to be told to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she was loving that. <laughs> oh, I gave her, I gave her a hard time. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't remember that. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but none of what, none of her memory is accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> none of it. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. That's freaking funny. Yeah. It's such a, man, growing up in the nineties was different, bro. We rode bikes everywhere. I guess by the middle of the nineties, we were all driving. Which is fun. Remember when your first friend gets his license and it's just like... I was the first friend, dude. Were you? Yeah. Oh, you were so, that bro. Yeah. So I, I got my license the end of my freshman year. And, well, I guess it was the summer because I had to go to the to to the summer classes or whatever to get to get my license. Yeah. But, dude, I think day one, I got a ticket going like 105. Oof. Yeah. With like eight kids in the car and like no seat belts. And uh, I'm pretty... I think that... I still remember. I'm pretty sure the... The officer was like, you know, I could take you to jail. <laughs> so, and you do funny enough. He let us continue driving with that many people in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Just get home. Was it in Canap? <laughs> no, that was up here before. I, that was, was it up here. That was yeah. before I got in, got in a little more trouble. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, that's the thing too. Police officers are a lot cooler back then. Dude, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think, I, I think I'm a target or something. It's my stupid truck. <laughs> I get pulled over all the time. Do you really? All the time. Like, as, as often as they can pull me over, they'll pull me over. Dude. Really? Dude, I haven't been pulled over. I should knock on wood. But, like, bro, it's been years. I wish that was the like case. Like, six, seven, eight, nine what are, years. What are you driving now? That black, big black Ford truck. And they're not pulling you over? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it lifted? It, it's the tremor package, so it's got a little bit of a lift, but not really. No, yeah. Not like yours is. Yeah, I know. I, I've got to overcompensate for most <laughs> most everything in my life. <laughs> But but um, that is not true. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, dude, I get pulled over all the time. Granted, you must have a sticker. You have a school the, sticker on there somewhere? No, I'll put whatever <laughs> sticker they want me to put. I'll get yeah. like, dude, I, <laughs> I did. Dan Simpson and I donated like forty thousand dollars to one of the police galas. I'm like, I deserve something. You guys, I'm I'm involved. Like you guys, yeah. should, you guys should give me some sort of like hall pass <laughs> or something. Now, granted, I'm not going to harass. Like, there, there, sometimes if I'm speeding, the hard part is I'm not always paying attention. Like, I guess I'm not always putting it on cruise control. I'm not paying attention how yeah. fast I'm going as long as I'm not, like, running people over, you know? Right. So. I, I have slowed down my driving. Are you still driving fast? I, I, not intentionally. The answer to that is yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not paying attention. So I'm not intentionally trying to, like. But I am. I'm aggressive. It's a, it's a competition. <laughs> Everything's a competition. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, dude, it's been, it's been a while. I think since I had kids, so like 12, 13 years ago, I slowed down a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'll still drive fast, don't get me wrong. In fact, my daughter last night, we're driving home from Avatar, and she was like, Daddy, will you slow down a little bit? Oh. And I was like, actually, when I, she said that, I was going five under. Oh, but it was wow. raining really hard. Yeah, right? so it was that kinda, makes sense. I was like, sure, babe. So I just slowed down another five, you know, like, whatever, I'll slow down for you. Yeah, but like, oh, yeah, I don't. I would, I would do the same thing if, if yeah, the kid yeah. said something like. Oh. When I'm by myself, though, well, this morning getting down here, we were a little late coming down here this morning. Same daughter. Yeah, <laughs> and, but it was dry, so she wasn't really paying attention. But I was, I was busting down here about 87, 88 miles an hour on the freeway. You know? <laughs> Did you see? Have you seen that uh, reel with the dude talking about like? Uh, I'll send it to you about. Yeah. He's like, he's like. Man, I wasn't going seventy five, bro. Like seventy five—that's like a snail or whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Hilarious. 
I drive fa- I drive way faster than that on the back roads. Yeah. yeah, it's just funny, dude. I'll send it to you. <laughs> no, dude, it's yeah, life is different, man. What's it like for you being forty, dude? Again, I, I can you believe I, it? As we as we came in, dude, I'm about to be forty three. I think it's such a strange thing outside of physical pain in my knees and and ankles and every, yeah. and everywhere else. Mentally, I feel like I'm still eighteen, dude. Like yeah. that's the weirdest thing to feel when your body's starting to not be the same, right? You wake up in the morning and my, my first step is like, is my knee going to work? <laughs> right, right. Stretch, stretch, yeah. move, move. Oh yeah, bro. I have to like roll out of bed a certain way. I got to move my legs over, get my back straight, come back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially right now, I was telling you, I threw my back out. So I'm like, like even right now, dude, I got like freaking sciatica on both legs. It's just like on fire. I'm just what like, you, ugh. What do you, so do you do like a chiropractor? Or what do you do? I've done a couple of chiropractors in the past. I, it's got to calm down first. So I did a massage on Monday and I'm doing another one today yeah. after this actually. And so, um, and that, and the one that I do today is more of a motion massage. So they do manipulate the whole body. Yeah. So this girl, she actually walks on me, which is like, great. Sounds kinky. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I am naked. <laughs> She's not, I don't think my eyes are closed, <laughs> but she does freaking stick her, her toes into me bad, dude. So, I, do you ever have those massages where you're like, dude, one more second, I'm saying uncle? Dude, I've had weird, I've had weird massages before, for sure. Yeah. Like, ones that you're kind of not sure what to do. Yeah. Like, I, one I can remember um, in Thailand, an actual Thai massage oh, in boy. Thailand, yeah. come, come to the bedroom, right? And I'm like, okay, that's fine, like, wh- whatever. I was thinking they were going to bring, you know, tables up or something. Yeah. It was a pretty nice hotel. Well, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a nice hotel. And um, they just jump on the bed with you on the bed. So I'm a little nervous about that to begin with. Yeah. And, uh, but they did things that I wasn't prepared for. Like I was naked and I remember her like spreading my legs, like I'm on my stomach. So yeah. spreading my legs, lifting up and then like heel in my butt crack. Like, that was <laughs> really? the weirdest thing. Like, I'm like, I'm not even sure what to do. Like the, the leg stretch was kind of, was kind of nice, but like I was uncomfortable because of the experience. <laughs> so, so I didn't, I didn't know I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And then the other the other thing too, like the oil was like that, uh, um, like your blessing oil. Oh yeah. But it, but it's it it smelled like it was rotten. Like it was like that rotten smell. I had to go shower like three times to get it. Oh, like, get it out get of it you. Off. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. But yeah, certain sports massages and like my uh, my calves, like when they're digging into your calves, like that stuff kills me. Oh, dude, the calves get me. My hamstrings are always tight, which is bad. I got to stretch them out, you know, but like, holy freaking crap, dude. I've had, <clears throat> I had one person using a tool. They use that metal scraper oh, like thing. the scrapers, yeah. Oh, dude, I can't do it. Yeah, it hurts, yeah. It's like, put me in a general anesthetic if we're doing this. <laughs> I have a hard time with stuff like that. Like, <laughs> does, does it really work? Is it just for blood flow or is it like, does it just eliminate the pain because that pain hurts more? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Oh, dude, there's. I, I almost believe that 100%. They, they like, tear you up a little bit. Um, sorry, I'm having freaking Dakota bring me a water. Oh, you're good. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you one oh, funny story about a massage. We were in Jamaica, dude. My, we were on a cruise. On the right? beach? Uh, no. So, you know, you get off of the ports, right? And they have, like, all the little shops. Yeah. One of them was a massage place, and my dad goes to get in there. Right? Oh, no. And uh, they're giving all of us a massage. And um, to be honest, dude, I remember the story so vividly, and I can't remember if my mom told me if I was there. But either way. Um, uh, dude, my dad, they had, like, pulled his arms back. He was in one of those chairs, right, where yeah. you kind of, like, sit yeah. forward. Uh-huh. They had pulled his, both of his elbows back and stuck their knee in his back, yeah. and he was just screaming. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, ah, just going bananas, you know? And... Um, <laughs> it just cracks me up because it's like it's pretty easy to be a massage therapist so there's good ones there's terrible ones and there's a lot in the middle yeah right and so oh, i don't know i've done those before i asked them on, on the beach because i've had like had like buddies getting them done or whatever and i'll walk up all quiet and i'll start rubbing them while the other lady like well while the lady like st- stands back <laughs> mess with them a little bit i love that dude that's freaking <laughs> funny um Oh, jeez, dude, massages. How the heck? Oh, yeah, because I'm getting myself massages. I'm like, why the hell are we talking about massages? <laughs> so let me ask you this. This is uh, some topics that I don't really jump in with people. Um, 
What do you think about society as a whole right now? Like, what do you think the problems in our society are? I, I don't know, man. I'm probably one of them. Probably one of the, <laughs> one of the problems. No, I don't, I don't know. It, it, there's a lot. I mean, doesn't it feel like it? You don't like it. I don't like. like I hear the word society, and I feel like I don't like it. I don't like it either. I, I, I feel like. No, I do feel like. Uh, our, our system is failing. And I don't know if that is, if that is just here in the United States or if that's kind of all over, like if it's, does it feel the same? Does it feel the same everywhere? Um, I think COVID messed with people um, mentally and emotionally. Like have you, have you noticed like on the, on the freeway where everybody's like zero tolerance almost seems like, seems like there's more accidents. seems like there's more road rage. Um, and and I'm, I'm just saying that from, from driving, but I would assume that's the case kind of, everywhere everybody yeah. seems to be like zero tolerance of anything right yeah, a little more on edge and yeah i don't know it's been it's been inter- it's been interesting the last the last couple of years but i do feel like the american pride and the flag and you know all that kind of stuff don't mean as much as it used to i almost feel like i almost feel like people are swaying more to no nah, i don't really like i don't really like where we're at now in yeah. in, in society I agree with you. I feel like with, so like with patriotism, right, we'll yeah. call it. I feel like we've, for the last 10 years, we've had a lot of like, eh, whatever, eh, whatever, you know? And it's like, yeah, I don't like that part of it. I don't like that part of it. But now I feel like it's starting to polarize, like really pull apart where it's like, no, screw you. I do like America. I don't know why we're pretending this isn't the greatest country. And you have other people that are like so hardcore on the other side, like this is the worst country ever. They colonized the world and they use all these stupid idiotic Words. I, think, I think that's sort of like the the woke culture of things, right? The hard yeah. the hard time I have with we're here, we're in the middle of like doing social media now, right? Like yeah. this is what what this is. But when you when you put together like an agenda and then you you build that propaganda around it, regardless, here's what's interesting to me, and I don't know real percentage. I don't know if there is a percentage. I'll just make shit up if I need to. But yeah. my guess is eighty percent of everyone f- is a follower, right? And that's why certain things do so well, church and all this. Yeah. You kind of have to have an organization for for that for that sort of system. You could convince anybody. I'll say I'll say this. Uh, not not that Black Lives don't matter, but BLM was propaganda and and a push that wasn't for for that intention, right? right. But so many people were on the bandwagon. They're still on it. <clears throat> still on the bandwagon. Yeah, and it's like. You don't understand whose agenda you're pushing, but but because they're followers, they don't question it. Right, right. And so you could get them to do anything, really. Yeah. I mean, they would do anything anything for that. Well, so, and to, to further your point, Black Lives Matter as a slogan is a no brainer. Yeah, like everyone knows that it's great marketing. Yeah, and, and if there's black people in our country that feel. Or they've been slighted or the system's not working for them and they need some light sh- shown on them so that they can fix something. I think everyone's on board with that. But you talk about BLM, the organization, it's as corrupt as anything that's, that's existed. They took the George Floyd death and just raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and pr- to not one dollar of that I was just gonna hit say, the black community. How, how much of that actually helped the, those communities? None of it. Yeah. Dude, they brought like $80 but, million dollars worth of real estate. But here's here's the thing, right? Like everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Even even, the even NFL a, a, lot, a lot of people a lot of people know this stuff now, and it's still it's still a thing. Yeah, it's a, it's fascinating, man. Like our our, our politics and our agendas and and all because I'm, I'm I wouldn't say I'm I'm conservative, but I wouldn't say that I I'm not a follower really yeah. with anything because because followers follow. Yeah. I don't mind certain policies. Good decisions are good decisions, I think. And it's for me, it's let's not let's not be gang affiliated. Let's just make sure we're making good decisions. And those good decisions might not be good for the next person or whatever, but you can at least make those those decisions based on those things. The hard part is is I don't actually believe in any anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like similar to BLM. They're gonna tell you what, what they're doing mm-hmm. is is what, what aligns with you and then not do it. Yeah. Where's, where's the accountability to something yeah. like that, right? And they'll do that in politics as well. So it's it's fascinating, dude. I mean, especially with with where we're at with with our economy, with inflation, with uh, with the world economy. 
yeah. with, with, with what's going on. It's, it's, no, it's, it's wild. Crazy. Even talking about BLM, right? I mean, <clears throat> like when that first came out, I was, I was on board, right? Me as a person, yeah. right? Someone who want, who like looked at it and said, yeah, if there's an underserved class, let's work on that. Right. But then politics and the media just destroy it all. Right. And then they've yeah. come out with blue lives matter. So I was like, Oh, here we go. Now we're going to have a damn slogan for every freaking color and creed and religion, you know, Mormons life matter. Are we going to get there? You know what I mean? Or, or is the, is the world going to reject that? You know what I mean? It's like every life matters. Yeah. It's like common sense, but that's not what the original message was. But then it just got twisted and ruined. And, and that's not the only organization. This shit happens oh. every day. Again, because, because people don't question it. Right. Yeah. I mean, the thing you need to do with some of that stuff, it, it, obviously question it, but then follow the money. Like oh, yeah. what's the intentions? What, what is it really? Right. And, and, and if there is some progress, um, not, not that you're just rallying a bunch of people to piss them off and at a, at another group of people, like what, what is the good that is coming for, just by, by their fruits? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I totally believe that by their fruits, you shall know them. Yeah. I mean, follow the money, follow the money on everything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause that's the same in politics. I mean, dude, th- this, this $1.7 trillion that they just, that they just put together, dude, we're in the middle of like the second war. No, nah, maybe not the second worst, but we're, we're going on the same direction as the early eighties with inflation. If they yeah. don't get it under control and they're in the middle of printing more money, like that's not going to solve anything, no. but follow the money. What are they doing with it? Who's it serving best? Dude, I'm blown away with this crypto thing where they funneled money from, from, and you know this better than, than I do. Cause I don't, I try not to watch the news and I try not to be, I try not to be involved. Yeah. Um, and the FTX stuff. Yeah, dude. And then, the, and funnel it to, to Ukraine back into the super PAC. Like that stuff to me is scary. I don't think that, I don't think that we should be taking super PAC money from anybody that's not in the States. Dude. Or, or to that same point, I don't feel like you should be able to raise money to buy your seat. Yeah. At all. Like, totally that agree. doesn't seem to be what, what this country was founded on. No, I think, I think the country was founded on, we're going to put some of the best minds we know in government. Yeah. A few months out of the year. They're normal. Yeah. Right? They're just normal people that are going to go back to Washington. That's what they call it, going back to Washington. Not, I've been in Washington for 40 freaking years. You know? It's a, it's a control thing, right? And I watch, I watch this and you watch the money, like what politicians are putting what money where and why are they doing that based yeah. on what policy is being passed? I'll tell you the funniest thing, if you really look at it, right? Like Donald Trump is entertaining as hell, right? Yeah. There's, he had no business winning the presidency ever. But you want to know why he won it? And you people, there's people out there want to be like, oh, there's Trump supporters and there's racists and white supremacists. No. Nah. They ran the devil. Hillary Clinton. Sorry. She's as corrupt as she, they come. And I hope I still live after this podcast is over. I don't get Clinton. You might, you, know? yeah, you might, the, the CIA <laughs> might be outside now. Right. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, she was horrible. Yeah. Everything that she touched was horrible. Everything the Clinton foundation was horrible. They pulled our freaking, they let those people, uh, left them to die in Iraq or I can't remember exactly where that was at. And, um, and you know, then she's busting Donald Trump's ass on taxes. And it's like, girl, you established the tax. You're part of that. You're the senator that created our tax system, you know? And then when he blew those doors out on top of her, dude, it was just like, you know, well, you, you, you avoid paying taxes. Yeah. Because you, you set up the game, the rules of the yeah. game. That's, well, the whole, uh, that's the whole point. If, did he do it? Did he do it legally? Then yep. if he did it legally, that's, that's how he should. That's how everyone should do it. That's how everyone does do it. He should be, yeah, he should be educated enough to that. It's like, you had to tell me that the Trump organization is not paying the freaking their tax. Like, get real. And here's the thing. She's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's just, that's just deflection. Because she can look you right in the face and tell you she loves you as she's stabbing a freaking knife right in your chest. And the country knew it. Yeah. That's why we're like, you know what? Let's take a chance on the TV guy then. (laughs) Because we ain't voting for this. He's a, he's a disruptor for sure. I think, I think being... And you see this in everything. I was talking to these guys out here about about Jake Paul, but th- there's sort of that model of of whatever level of attention you can get based on how much you can disrupt, right? Yeah. And so and so I could see why he would get enough followers in order to do that or enough people to do that. And and I don't nec- I don't agree completely with some of that disruption in in that position, yeah. <laughs> right? Because there has to be like a level of uh, respect, I think, probably for yeah. that. But but. Uh, 
or I guess that I would prefer that to be the case because there's certainly not been the case this <laughs> this president. No, but uh, I don't think we're ever going to get a normal president again. I really don't. Well, that's my fear is that is that the seats are being bought and it doesn't really matter even if even if they're qualified or not qualified. There, it seems to me that everybody has a has a price. Well, are the best people in the country running for office? Hell no. Mm -mm. They don't want any of that noise. They want none of that noise. We should be sticking the most fiscally conservative people in there for the budgets, right? Yeah. And then, well, I'm going on and on and on about how to fix the government. Because you, because any of us with a common sense can fix the government in like six months. It would not be hard. You kick all the social programs down to the states. Boof. That's what it's for, right? The federal government's only for X, Y, Z. But we have blown it and we've blown up to this massive thing that just touches every single person's life. Mm. It was never intended to be that way and it shouldn't be that way. You know, local government is the most effective at helping you. doesn't matter where you're out in the country. Your local government is the best at focusing on you because they have the same problems that you have and everyone there wants to solve those problems. Why is some senator from Maine in Washington, D.C. solving problems for people in Utah? doesn't work. And that's when you get all these conflated laws, these spending bills, the, you know. But I think it's, is that, is that smoke and mirrors or is that just another way for them to have whatever level of control they want to have? It's all control. It's all control. Yeah. So, I mean, literally, dude, if you were to make a list of like the top 25 people in Utah, let's just, let's break it down. The top five people in Utah, in your opinion, are miles and galaxies better than anyone in Washington. There's not one crooked dude in Washington. I don't care who you're talking about. And then people like us, right? They're like, well, Mitch McConnell's terrible at this. Yep. Nancy Pelosi's terrible at this. Yep. Like, can we stop talking about the obvious shit? Yeah. Like, what we're not doing is putting our best people in there. And we never will. Well, but that's the thing. So, okay, so to that point, like Carrie Lake, for example, right? Like, here's my thing. Who's she? I don't know her. Uh, she was the one that, that just ran for Arizona. Sort of the swing, oh, okay. the swing vote or whatever, right? And so she lost. They've got all this proof, and I don't do well with with uh, you know with some of the stories or agendas on yeah. on either side really. Yeah. So is it proof that she actually won, or maybe the ballots were counted wrong, or maybe it was whatever? Let's hypothetically let's agree and say okay, it was it was wrong. She got screwed. Okay, so you're telling me that in our government, our votes don't matter ultimately, right? You're going to put whoever in that seat regardless if that's accurate. I can't wrap my head around why the Republicans aren't doing something about that if that's true. Well, because it's how they get placed too. So nobody will be placed <laughs> in those in those places without I, Biden. I don't think Democrat Republic a Republican exists once they're in Washington. No, that's only for voting time. Dude, you and I agree because it's it's what you have in this country and probably in every country is the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. And the haves want to stay in those positions. And in order to stay in those positions, you can buy those seats. Mm -hmm. And it is what they probably have awesome parties together behind the scenes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and it's weird because at a certain point, they should. They should all get along, right? They should not be voting. You're supposed to pick the best person, send them over there. They represent you. Yeah. And then come back and do what's best, right? In the circumstance, have reason, have logic, have yeah. <laughs> compromise, all that kind of stuff, right? Now I just think it's all one big thing. Hey, we're here, great. Yeah, we're here forever. We never get voted out, <laughs> you know, and they really don't. Yeah, you've got to have some crazy scandal happen for you to get voted out. We haven't even had any of those that they go. The, the scandals that we do have, they don't do anything about. Yeah, well, we don't care anymore. You know, a senator has sex with someone not his wife. It's like oh, whatever. Please stop spending our money on stupid shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I swear the general population that gets it, that's all we care about, right? It's all about the economy. Yeah. But. But here we are. Here we are. Yeah, man. <laughs> Crazy. Anyways. So here's, so here's a question, right? So we just kind of ranted about politics for a minute, right? And just how stupid it is. What do we, so this is one of the reasons I don't pay attention to any of it, right? Because really, it kind of, I, I know all that stuff. Believe it, know it, whatever you want to call it. It just doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, I've just got to stay here and work, do my businesses, my families, my relationships, live the best life that I can. I got to remove that from my world, right? Yeah. You kind of feel the same way? I, I, dude, I don't, I don't ever watch the news. Yeah. I don't pay attention. Again, if I see something, I always, I dive into things, but it's I, I dive into into it from my perspective as opposed to what's being told to me. Yeah. Because I don't, 
I don't trust what's being told to me or what's being fed to me, regard, yeah. regardless of what it is, which is, which is, I think, the way everybody should probably be. I just can't. It's one of the things you just said a second ago about like the GoFundMe stuff. Would do people? Would they? Do they feel good about you know being shitty? Well, they apparently they feel fine or they sleep well or do whatever. You and I aren't guys like that where where we're just going to fall in line and and you know what I mean? Like yeah. like we want to think through things. We're not followers, right? Right? Yeah, and that maybe that's a character trait that people really need to start looking into. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Is it just is not it, follow? Is it is it something that is just inside of us because of that's who we are, how we grew up, or whatever? Or is is that something you can be? Like it's something you can be, in my opinion. Yeah, I hope so. It's it's like it's like trying to tell somebody to build some confidence, though. Like, how do you do that? How do you build your confidence? Yeah, that, that's a good point. Because I know how to do it. So do you? But yeah. How do you? How do you? Teach someone how exactly. to build confidence. Teach someone. For me, it's yeah. wins in, in that thing. Like yeah. any of the wins or setting goals and achieving those goals or the wins. Like, But I think natu naturally, regardless, I don't think either one of us probably grew up not having some level of confidence or belief in ourselves. Yeah. And I don't know where that necessarily came from initially. Yeah, you're right with wins. To get confident, you got to get some wins. You also have to have some losses. But when the losses come, you got to understand why you lost. Yeah. Right? I think like, losses are you can't essential. just lose and cry. Losses are es essential, yeah. regardless, because you have to feel that and you have to know it, and you need to know why you got there and how to get out of it. Yeah. But but uh, yeah, even with wins though, right? When you win, you can be okay with it. And blah blah blah. But you really need to know why you didn't win bigger. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> dude? You know, some people are just complacent with that. I feel, yeah, I feel like. Half the NBA is complacent with that. <laughs> like, I can't. I can't wrap my head around like certain things that just that comment alone, right? Like, like the Jazz, they've been they've been struggling, but it's like for whatever reason, mindset, coaching, staff, wherever this comes from, like they slow down. <laughs> What's the reason for slowing down? You you know that when you get to get into a spot where you're only up by five or whatever, and you start getting in your head that you're gonna you're gonna lose that game regardless, but you still do it. Mm -hmm. like, why are you doing it? Like why are you repeating the same stuff over and over again? You need, you need to go out there like Golden State or somebody else, and it doesn't matter if you're up by five or fifty. You're still playing at the same speed, right? Like dominate that game. That's what you're there for. Yeah. You're not, you're not slowing down. I, I, I'm okay with like benching starters and doing whatever, yeah. but, but I don't think, you know, I, my opinion, and this is, I'm talking basketball, but this is live. This is our wins, right? Like pay attention to how you got to that point and don't, even if you won a little bit, like why didn't you go crush it? Right. Yeah. What, and what do you need to do to do, to do that differently? I'm in a, I'm in a weird place with, with business right now, not necessarily like all my business stuff, but mortgages specifically, like, Dude, rates are the highest that they've been since like 2001 and close to even like in, in the 90s. So the market is so stalled. And I, I think that's all intentional, right? Like that's a part of like getting inflation under control. But um, mentally it's messed with with so many people. It's messed with with society or like with with people buying or selling or doing anything because yeah. of because of fear, which is also another great way to control people, right? Oh yeah. It's a great way to get elected. It's a great way to control people. Yeah. But, um, dude, it's like one of the best times to buy. I made an offer on a house. I've been making offers on a lot, on a lot, a lot of different houses. Um, this one didn't work out, but I made an offer on a house. They accepted the, the offer like $150,000 below list price. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it was that the list price was the value, but pe right. people are willing to make, make deals right now. And I've, yeah, I've got a pipeline of, yeah, I don't know, 25, 50 million in volume that are just waiting for rates to change. Right. They're not going to change. Like, realistically, they're not going to change. Probably through the end of this year, maybe. But everybody's stalled because they think, well, you know, we keep hearing that inflation is going to be under control and we'll just wait for the rates to drop back down to three. And I'm like, the media, the media tells stories, but this story needs to be told by the media is that you're not getting a 3% rate, maybe ever, but yeah. but maybe not in the next five years, maybe not in the next 10. Yeah. You know, it's not worth you stalling yeah. to get to get something when right now is a great time to buy. Right. I mean, I don't see prices dropping ridiculously low, but the inventory is, is at, a, at an all-time high in the last like five years. 
you know, we need to take take advantage. Yeah. But you and I both know there's, there's wins in both markets. So <laughs> there's probably there's probably better wins in a down market anyhow for guys. Oh, like, absolutely. For guys like us. Because price price of the asset you buy is more important than the financing piece. Yeah, refinance. Yeah. If, if, if you're just doing it that way. But if you've got a good deal on something that will be gone when rates change, then you're screwed. Yeah. You just lost out. It's just foolish. Yeah. Well, my friend, we're at the end of the podcast. We did it. So what, you asked me life advice. Is that what you said? You got to give me two minutes of your best advice. It could be life. It could be relationship. It could be business. It could be. Oh, man. Whatever you feeling. Whatever pops in your head. <laughs> life advice. So if you have. So some people have just said you're on your deathbed. You're looking at your, your children. What are you going to tell them? Yeah. And you probably get this a lot. I, I, I like that. I like that, too. That, that's a hard thing, right? Like work life balance i think i saw something for you on this on this post i think you were talking to one of your kids or son or somebody this is a while ago but i remember this yeah <clears throat> and and i don't disagree with you man i think i'm more comfortable like i love being a dad i'm not taking any anything away from that but like where i feel i wish i felt more success as a dad or a parent or maybe even that i was maybe a, a better example or that I was more self-aware in, in those situations. Like I'm present, but I feel my wins and my confidence and all that. I feel more wins and confidence working. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily like that dynamic. I don't know why that is what it is or where that stems from, but, um, but we're not taking any of that with us. Right. So I'm on my deathbed. We're not taking any of that with us. We're not taking our businesses. We're not taking our money. We're not taking our homes, our cars, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so creating those memories, lasting memories and connection and, and bonds, um, are super huge and important. Um, for, for me talking Christmas and I don't know if this is life advice or just me ranting about stuff. I, <laughs> We, 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 uh, hopefully again, nobody listens to me on this. You guys can keep this or cut it or do whatever. <laughs> uh, pa Paige and I are talking, we just had Christmas and we've got a lot of nieces and nephews and everybody and, and everybody celebrates a little bit different. We've got a, a family that had just gotten divorced. And so the kids had to go to both houses and Santa, <clears throat> Santa got to go to both houses and you know, Paige is a little frustrated. Like Santa, you know, kids aren't special. Santa didn't get to come to both houses. So it's like, I had to like step back and be like, okay, well, you're frustrated about a lie to tell another lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, let people lie, let people lie how they want to lie. <laughs> right. Um, I don't mind. I don't love the idea of, of Santa. Um, I don't love the idea of having to lie to the kids about, about Santa, if that makes sense. I get it. It's fun. It's, it, it's, it's sort of like, it's obviously part of our history and our culture and, and everything else. The point I'm making is, and I'll ask you this, dude, this is, this will be fascinating as, as a kid, maybe like younger kid. Do you remember any of your gifts? Like, can you remember anything specific off the top? Maybe like a couple, but do you remember, do you remember very, everything? Very few, very few. Realistically, do you remember, do you remember any? I remember like. A few Honestly, months. you know what I remember? I remember a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> like that was that long ago, dude, because I got one, my brother, mine was green. My brother's was blue. My other brother's was red. But you had probably decent Christmases always, right? You probably had decent Christmases, toys, fun, oh, things, yeah. family time, dinners, yeah. all that kind of stuff. That stuff's all fun. You probably remember the dinners and stuff better than you remember, um, or games, or things yeah. like that you did did with your family that way. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I want to get to a point or a place where it's, hey, this is these are the amount of vacations that we want to take as a family to create life experiences that they may not have otherwise. I don't love the idea of spending a couple thousand dollars or however much money you spend on Christmas for stuff that nobody remembers. Right. And you're, you're just jumping in. You're being a follower with, with the culture to do that. I like the idea of, Hey, let's take the family to Hawaii for Christmas. Let's take the family to Thailand for Christmas. Yeah. Let's take the family wherever they're never going to forget those experiences. And so to have those moments and create time for that kind of stuff, I think for, for us is probably, is probably key. Because I remember every vacation I've gone on. I mean, yeah. maybe not every detail of the vacation, but I remember all, oh, of, yeah. the, all of the stuff with the kids. Like, I remember um, we took the kids, funny enough, it was December a couple years ago, to Hawaii. And the kids are out playing on the, the beach and, like, you know, just just the total experience. Like, they're never going to forget that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I think that's the life advice. For guys like us that, that enjoy staying busy and working and the competition and the grind and all that kind of stuff, 
that we make time for those life experiences. Otherwise, when dude, we get to our grave or when we're sitting down on that bed and saying our goodbyes, like we don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So it's not worth it unless we have those relationships. Got to nurture them, dude. If you, if you don't, they, they fade. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast, dude. Thanks, brother. I, I know appreciate short, it. Short timing, but you made it happen. Hey, I wasn't going to turn you down, man. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks for listening to the President McCormack Podcast, brought to you by McCormack Foundation, Saxton Fund, ADP Lemco, and Professional Floor Systems. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and keep up with Mark on Instagram at President McCormack.